been a little while since I have done a sewing tutorial with you guys and that's because we've been moving and renovating and just enjoying the festive season but it's so good to be back I've got a massive lineup of tutorials coming your way and today I'm actually going to be taking you through how to make your own DIY bucket hat I just think they're so cute you can like wear them down to the beach or like add them to an outfit and make it nice and stylish there's just so many uses for it and it's actually a really easy DIY piece so today what we need to get started with this is I'm going to put a link in the below description and this is to download this template which is a PDF and you'll just be have to print it out and then cut it out to use as a template for your sewing so that's one piece to get started Then you also need some scissors some pins some matching thread or you can even use a contrasting thread if you want to have that little creative flair to it and then obviously you need some fabric so with fabric for a bucket hat you need to make sure it's nice and sturdy you don't want something too flimsy that's just gonna fall down over your face while you're wearing it or just like have no sturdiness to it so I would suggest something like a terry toweling a thick linen a denim even a cotton just something that you know you pick up and it's got that little bit of thickness to it and then we're actually going to double layer it up and give it that bit of thickness as well to stop it from falling over and then last you need a sewing machine to put it all together so let's jump into the steps of making your own bucket hat So step one, we're gonna grab our fabric and lay it out. I've actually got two kinds as I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can finish it. And then once we've laid that out, we're going to grab the template that we printed and cut out from the below link and place them on top of the fabric, making sure that you know we utilize as much of space as we can and try and not have any leftovers and too much scrap fabric that we can't reuse. So what I suggest is starting at one corner and kind of working your way across. So the circle is nice and simple, you put it there, you can even use your pins to pin it in place before you start cutting around it. So we just get one circle, we'll be cutting out two of these headband pieces. So what you can do is just pin one in place and then pin it again and cut that out. And then with the brim section, what we need to do for that is we there's this side here that we need to put on the fold. So what that means, we grab the fabric and we literally fold it. And then this side that says where the fold is, we then literally put that where that folded section is. So then we can keep adjusting this fabric so again we don't have much waste. And then that fits perfectly from the fold and I'll just cut it there. And then when we cut it out, we've got one piece, but it's just because it's too long to fit on a printed A4 piece of paper, I've just made it so you put it on the fold. Right here, so I'm gonna pin that all in place and then start cutting out my pieces and I'll talk you through the next step. recommend just leaving the templates with the pieces because I have previously made this before and got confused which pieces are which so in saying that now we jump into the sewing side of things so first we're just gonna grab the brims and put them aside so we avoid all confusions happening so what we do first is we grab one of the headband pieces place it down so the good side of the fabric is facing up then we grab the other piece and get the good side and face that down so that they're facing each other then we'll just pin up these side pieces sideways there and that's where we sew. So I'm just going to add those pins in and sew up the sides. So all throughout sewing this I would suggest just leaving about like a centimetre to a half a centimetre seam allowance as that will be perfect amount for not taking in too much. Ready? So now that's pinned it is time to sew. So now that you've sewn down the two side seams, you just flip it so that the good sides are facing out. And there you have your little headpiece for the hat. So now that we have that piece, we're going to actually grab the circle and start matching that up ready to sew it in place. There is a slight angle kind of going up. You want the like the shorter side. So the angle in, you're gonna be starting focusing on that point there. So we'll grab that piece. And just like this, as I'm facing it to you, we're going to lay it so that top seam is down on the circle. And we're just going to pin that in place first up. So now that we've got that first piece in place, then just start moving the fabric around the edge and pinning it in place and just making sure that we have enough fabric to go around the whole circle. So the good sides of the fabric is facing of the circle and the headband for this. And we 
just keep going around and pinning it in place. Hopefully if we've cut that out and measured it all right, it should fit perfectly. If for some reason it doesn't end the headband, you have too much of that compared to the circle, you just need to take in the side seams a little bit so that the full circumference of the circle matches the circle of the top of the hat. And if the circle is too big and the headband piece is a little bit smaller, just shuffle it all in a little bit from the side seam of the circle and therefore it'll take up a little bit less of the circle. I hope that makes sense, but hopefully with the patterns that I gave you, it all should match up. Mine matches up, so hopefully we just cut it right. As you can see, it just kind of looks like a weird bunched up thing where all the inside of the brim is there and you flip it around and the circle is just nice and clean. And what we'll do is we're literally just gonna sew around that area that we pinned in place. So then once we've sewn around that area, we end up flipping it and this will be a little preview of what it will look like. And all the good sides will be showing like that. And we've got like a little kind of weird chef's hat. So I'll flip that back around, sew it in place so the circle is attaching to the headband piece and I'll show you how it turns out. Radio, so I have finished attaching that headband area to the top circle area. And what I do is I now just flip it so that the good sides are showing. And then we have that completed section of the hat. So now that that's all good to go, we just put it aside and next we're gonna focus on the brim. So for this, we have cut out four pieces. So we're gonna pair up two pieces at a time. So again, we're just gonna lay one down with the good side facing up. And then we grab the other piece and lay the good side down so that they are facing each other. So I'll do that for both sections. So once we've laid them all down and aligned them, so obviously that it angles out and we're just gonna focus on the large bottom area. We're just gonna pin that in place and just sew a straight line across there for each of them. And then I'll show you what to do next. So now that that is all pinned in place, we're just gonna sew across there and then fold them so the good sides are facing out. finish sewing that second piece together. We're just going to grab the first one that we laid out completely flat so both of the good sides are facing up and then grab this piece and again lay it out flat because it is a rounded surface. It's not going to be perfectly flat. It's going to try and want it to stick up. So what we'll do is lay that with the good side facing down so that they're facing each other and then we just pin across these side sections. So at the moment you're probably like what is she doing? This is some weird like flat area. How does this turn into the brim? So once we sew down there, we end up folding it out and it becomes this nice round brim area that we have all the seams hidden and it's nice and clean. So I'm just going to pin those side pieces and then I'll show you how it turns out. Radio, so I have finished sewing down those side areas and what we do now is we fold it inside out, well technically good side out, and then we can kind of like start to see the brim forming. So it's like a circular piece and all the seams are nice and hidden away. So obviously at the moment it's a bit like, it keeps moving, it's a bit flimsy. So what we'll do from here is if you have an iron, you, this is where you can iron it flat and get it all nice and sturdy, but get the edges where that side seam is and make sure it's nice and like tight there. And then just keep sewing a line all the way around the circle, about a centimeter in from the edge. Follow that a centimeter in, in, in until you fill up the whole area and that will keep it nice and sturdy, tight together. It won't flop around too much. And you'll be surprised when you start adding those lines, how much strength it gives to these two pieces of material so that it will stay up like a brim and not just fall down like a random piece of fabric. So I'm gonna start doing that. If you're not confident with leaving an equal amount of space between each line, uh, this is where you could like grab a bit of chalk and measure out the centimeter space. Otherwise just go by eye or use the markings on the machine but I'm just gonna go for it and start sewing little centimeter lines in and around the circle. So that is the first full circle all done around the edge of the brim. I'm just gonna continue doing that, sewing about a centimeter and a half in from that again and I repeat and repeat until I get to that other side. And then I'll show you how to attach this to the rest of the hat and we're done.
So I finished sewing three of these lines. I'm gonna keep going until I get to the other side. But I thought I'd point out, so if you do have a bit of a thicker fabric, you can end up having a bit of a play with these and maybe just add like one or two on the edge and leave the rest open or like even do zigzags or change the colors of the threads. It's a bit of like creative fun. Once you've made one, you can keep evolving it from there. So I have finished sewing all the lines on this brim area. So what we should be left with now is this circle ready to attach to the other piece of the hat that we finished. This is the point where you should probably figure out which side you prefer to be your good side and which one your bad side. So I'm going to have my good side facing up and I'm going to grab the inside area. I like to start at where the seam is. So I'll grab that and I'm just going to grab the good side of this hat. This inner section where the seam starts meets that inner section where the seam starts and folds up like that. So what you do is you end up pinning it so that the hat and the brim kind of sit like that. So it looks like a bit of a sailor hat from that side and you're just aligning the good sides of the hat and the brim. And then again, just start from that seam, pin the whole way around, make sure it matches. And if it doesn't, make any adjustments if need be. So I'll pin mine and I'll show you how that turns out. When I was pinning it in place, I actually found out that the headband area is quite a bit bigger than the brim. So all I did was I just unpinned it where the headband seam is and I just took it in a little bit so now the circumference matches perfectly so that's what I mean like if anything doesn't match up just pin it in place double check it that it all matches before you sew and if it doesn't just make the adjustments where need be right here I'm just going to sew around there and then I've completed the hat finished adding the brim to the rest of the hat so when I flip it with the good sides facing out I now have a cute as bucket hat so cool obviously I'm gonna try it on now make sure everything fits well all the portions are nice and when I'm happy with that I'm gonna go back through turn it inside out and just kind of zigzag all the edges so they don't fray obviously if you have an overlocker this is where you can use that I'm actually gonna make a second one and I'll show you how that one turns out and I'm gonna leave these edges frayed but I thought taking you through the steps of making this is just a basic way and you can evolve and make things differently this one is obviously just single-sided on the inside but if you wanted to make a double-sided one where the fabrics are different so therefore you have two different bucket hats in the one you would essentially just make two and kind of join them together, which I have done before, but I feel like this is just an easy intro into making a bucket hat. Let's try it on. <laughs> I love it. I love doing like that little front flip. I think it's cute. Well, if you followed along to make your own bucket hat, I hope it turned out okay. And I love seeing how your creations turn out. So please either tag me at the Essentials Club on Instagram or DM me. I love seeing how they turn out. But yeah, this is so exciting. I can't wait to add this one to the collection of, of growing bucket hats. Thank you so much for following along and can't wait to see you around in the upcoming tutorials. Thanks.